News 46, local coverage you can count on. spotlight there. Anyway, I'm here tonight. Uh, Maria can't make it tonight. She's in California. And I just got back from uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. And guess what I brought with me? A really bad cold. Uh, while I was down there, I had, uh, on the way out there, I stopped in Chicago to meet my family uh, to change planes. And guess what I did? You got those JPEGs up there? I quench my craving for my White Castle hamburgers. Let, let's see some pictures of those. If you would, you got this up there? There I am. Eat your heart out, heart out people from Chicago that are out here. Look at that, I'm eating that, okay. It's been about three years since I had my last one, but uh, thank you for that, Jeff, and thank you for having White Castles. But anyway, uh, tonight's our Thanksgiving show, and also we're gonna be doing uh, issues about uh, Christmas uh, lighting. Thanksgiving uh, is coming up. Uh, that's what this show is gonna be broadcast uh, just prior to Thanksgiving. And I have with me Anita Smith from the Prump Valley Fire and Rescue. And we're going to be talking about some of the perils of cooking turkeys outside in the, the fryers, these uh, uh, gas fryers or propane stoves that are only to be used outside. And uh, if Anita, uh, do you want to start with the, the video first and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it after that? See the... Uh... Yeah, we can talk about it during. Okay, let's do that. We'll, we'll show the video and then uh, keep our uh, mics hot and then uh, we'll see some of the perils of cooking with the uh, uh, fryer. This is a, a public safety announcement that is actually available on YouTube and uh, they're, they're going over several things here. One of them is to make sure that we choose a, a fryer to purchase that has at least four legs to it. The three-legged fryers are not considered very safe. Uh, pretty easy to knock over, just like the old three-wheelers, you know. That's a three-wheeler or three-legged one That's there. a three-legged one there, correct. Uh, the thing about turkey deep fryers is they are filled with oil, and, um, you know, we need to make sure that, number one, we're putting the correct oil in it. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be peanut oil, and the reason it's peanut oil is because of the flash rate. Now, what you're going to see here is you're going to see a violent reaction, and the main reason for that is that turkey is frozen. So we need to make sure that all the turkeys we're using are thawed very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, don't want them wet. Don't want them dripping with water. want them fairly dried. What happens is that oil boils, boils over and uh, the flame impacts it and you get a subsequent fire. Now, if <coughs> this is close to your house or even inside your garage uh, or or I've even seen people do it on their on their back decks, uh, decks or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I was you're, thinking. Yeah. You're looking at a potential structure fire. Oh, my God, You can yeah. lose your entire residence from it. Very, very dangerous. If you use them correctly and you take your time, oh. read the directions. Yeah, keep you know? the kids in it. said to keep the kids and uh, the pets. Watch them, yeah. Absolutely. Keep everybody clear of it. We recommend, obviously, that you keep anything away from your residence at least 25 feet that's burnable. So that's a, that's a good distance. Uh, be 25 feet from your house or from the uh, anything that's combustible. And um, that's a little bit uh, a little bit safer. Yeah. So never never in the house. Never in oh the God. house. Uh, never in the garage. Uh, not, not at a patio. No. Uh, if you have a concrete driveway, you have a gravel driveway, 20 25 feet away from the house. Mm -hmm. Keep it away from brush. Absolutely. Uh, keep it away from me. The animals. The kids and the animals. The animals may come up because of the smell of food and grease, oh, God, yeah. and they may knock it over, which is, you know, with oil fires, the thing you have to remember is the fire is going to flow wherever the oil does. Yes. So it, it's, um, it's going to expand throughout an area that's pretty large. So you want to uh, definitely be careful when you're using deep fryers. Keep your oil at a, a minimum level. So, uh, you know, there's a minimum and a maximum level. You don't want to exceed that maximum level right. on your on your oil. Right. Um, the, the instructions fires. would be there, plus it'll be etched on the side of the, uh, the, the Correct. container. Correct. And you want to make sure that you fill that cold and fill it to the, uh, to the line you're supposed to cold. 
um, you know, once once oil gets hot, it will expand some. But you don't want to you don't want to put too much in there. But it's peanut oil. It is peanut oil. Vegetable oil has a, a lower flash, flash point. point. Yes, so it will catch on fire uh, much faster and at a lower rate than peanut oil does. And that's the reason that they, that they recommend the peanut oil. And definitely make sure that bird is thawed out. Yes. Thawed completely, even the inside. You know, yes. run it through some warm water, whatever you have to do, but definitely don't put any ice in there. Mm -hmm. And don't be throwing things in there either, like Twinkies. They, they all do deep fried Twinkies, <laughs> deep -fried like Twinkies. in Las, Las Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, that nice could be dangerous too, like flinging them into there also. You know, the interesting thing is they have a, a new thing. I was walking through Walmart the other day, and they actually have a new product out, and it's called an in, inside uh, fryer, turkey fryer. So, you know, uh, it, it doesn't use any gas. It uses electricity, but that doesn't mean that it can't catch on fire. Right. Uh, yeah. It absolutely doesn't mean that. So we want to make sure that we're careful. It's supposed to use, I was reading on the box, it's supposed to use less oil, and it's supposed to be safer. But uh, either way, it's still hot oil, and you want to use uh, as much uh, caution as you can. Plus, we're in a desert here. We're not in the Midwest or Northern climate, so it's not mm -hmm. that cold. Correct. Yeah, so it's a little bit easier for us to uh, do that outside. Absolutely. So that's a tip that we have just about every year, and it's 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 uh, it's very dangerous, folks. Folks, so you know, please heed the, the warnings. Absolutely. Man, what what's the next thing we want to do? Well, you know, we, we uh, wanted to talk about a lot of things with the holidays coming. I know in our house, we always put our Christmas tree up the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, that's uh, pretty much a, uh, a yearly thing that we do. And all the Christmas lights come out. Uh -huh. And we have boxes and boxers, boxes of Christmas lights. And, uh, you know, the thing we have to remember about Christmas lights is it still takes le electricity to power them. And very often, you know, you have the cord at the, the top and the bottom where you can plug in and right. chain them. Um, manufacturers only recommend that you, that you put three of those cords together and no more. Any more than that, right. and you're overloading the circuits. Um, for example, you know, this is, I don't know if, uh, if you can kind of get a picture of this, but this is an overloaded socket. I know we're a little far away, but... Uh, this is actually from a structure fire, and this was caused by, by series arcing. And what happens is when you overload a circuit, this can actually contribute to that, and um, it can cause this socket and this outlet to fail. And this is one of the things we worry about, especially during Christmas time, because I don't know if, you, if you're like me, but I love animation, and I love Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. So we need to spread them out and make sure that they're not all in one plug uh, in one circuit. Additionally, power strips. Everybody has power strips nowadays. And what I've seen a lot of is people plugging power strip into power strip into power strip. And it's still only drawing off of one outlet. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need to remember. Um, you know, that's a big draw. And because of the arcing, uh, that socket and that outlet can fa <clears throat> excuse me, fail, causing a fire. Best case scenario, a circuit breaker old trip, but if not, that's not the wisest thing to do. Absolutely know? not. Especially with older homes, older uh, mm -hmm. mobile homes here too. We still have some with aluminum wire, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's issues with the uh, conductivity of the, the aluminum and the, and the copper too. Absolutely. Um, I brought something else for you to look at, John. What you got? This is a, <laughs> a great a example. We like to keep these things, and it, it's for this exact reason. And if you can see, this cord is actually melted together. together. And all of these little marks here are all burn marks from this cord arcing. What had happened is this cord was put up in a structure, in a, in a, in a house, and there was uh, a rug over top of it. And the rug basically uh, assists in, in heating the cord, but this was also overloaded. Now, when, when you buy extension cords from the store, these are only intended for temporary use. Right. Extension cords are never ever intended on permanent use. So if we use them permanently, uh, we overload their life. Their lifespan is, is not that long. So they're only for temporary use. In fact, um, Christmas lights are UL tested, and they're actually only tested for 90 days of use a year. And that's it. So they're only tested for 90 days of use. Extension cords are, are similar to that. They're not for permanent Plus, if you're in the desert here too, if you leave that outside, the sun will uh, ravage the uh, the rubber on that. They'll become brittle, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be 
become cracked and with the heat uh, it'll be another reason for that to start arcing too absolutely so we definitely don't want to do that uh, the other thing i brought you is looks like a a fairly simple cord but what we have here is something that probably most people have in their house and this cord has lost its thermal covering and it doesn't look like a bad thing mm -hmm. necessarily but the problem is is why did it pull back and okay. why is it not in good repair excuse me we want to make sure that our cords are the same as when we purchased them basically you know using a cord like this can be very dangerous and it can short out on us so same thing with christmas lights when we start plugging in those lights, if we have broken off bulbs or um, you know, cord that's frayed, similar to this one, we don't want to use those, okay? Um, typically, we want to we want to scrap those, or if it's if it's a simple broken bulb, you can you can unscrew those or take them out, and then you can replace the bulbs in them. But you never want to leave it broken, and you never want to leave it um, frayed. And the bulbs basically are next to nothing as far as price. Oh, absolutely. The only thing are uh, whatever the the flavor of the year is uh, whatever is new is going to be the expensive thing yeah. next year. That's going to be cheap like everything else. Yeah, you know, they used to sell those little replacement bulb packs, and you can get them in the store for nickels and dimes. Pretty cheap. But, uh, yeah, I keep thinking of the uh, Christmas vacation with uh, the Griswolds with the cat <laughs> that uh, was chewing on the wire and it yeah. got nailed. <laughs> so that always comes in handy. Yeah, oh, yeah, watch absolutely. for animals, too. You have, do have to watch for animals. <coughs> um, yeah, because they I, get playful. Yeah, I have special dogs. They chew through wires all the time, and it, they're plugged in. It doesn't seem to hurt them. And little children also will... Absolutely. Their hands will go towards the outlet. Absolutely. You definitely have to watch children with the outlets. You know, you might want to invest in some of the outlet covers uh, to keep them away from those. But oh, it's been years. Yeah, you have but something I, I plugged remember, in, yeah. you know, you need to keep an eye on that. Just like you have the uh, the little clips for cabinets mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Yes. Like they still, I imagine they still sell those. They sure do. Yes. They sure do. Keep the kids out of the uh, uh, the detergent, these uh, vinegar, mm -hmm. whatever is down there. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, the other thing is um, what we hang our lights with. They make plastic kip clips to hang uh, Christmas lights, and we mm -hmm. need to use the plastic clips, not anything the metal. metal. Remember, oh, the, the hooks, the metal ones. Yeah, we don't want to use metal against <laughs> the Christmas lights. What well, you know, we have quite a bit of wind out here, and that wind can fray the cords against the metal, and then you just create another electrical problem. So that's another uh, fact about that. Tree. Oh, do we want to show some of the, the videos of the trees? Yeah, let's show the, the trees. The fun we can have with uh, Christmas trees. Jeff? Let's, uh... Jeff, do you, do you want to show the video? Jeff? <laughs> I don't think Jeff hears. <laughs> um, the, uh, the Christmas light cords, though, they do have UL tags on them, and the, the red tags are actually outdoor use. They're certified for outdoor use. But if they have a green UL tag on them, it's indoor only. So if you use those outdoor, it rains, it gets wet, it's not, it's not certified for that. So you have another uh, big possibility of a, uh, a fire. Let's see if I could, uh, Earth, Jeff? Jeff, could you play the, uh, the, uh, the Christmas ones? There Thank we go. You. Our mic's hot? Yes. Maybe. Hopefully we'll come back with, there it is. There we go. I've now, seen this this is, um, this is a very interesting one. This actually comes from NIST, which is the National Institute for Standards and Training, mm -hmm. or excuse me, Standards and Technology. And um, as you can see, five seconds, you have a fully involved Christmas tree. And this is a live tree, but it's a dry scotch pine. Uh, mm -hmm. When you have a live tree in your house, it absolutely has to stay watered. Yes. Uh, when it runs out of water, it will go up literally this, this quickly. And as you can see, this room is 50% is involved already, and it's less than 30 seconds. And I'll joke about it, but you have to watch your animals because they'll be drinking from the water from the Absolutely. tree. So you have to make sure that the, uh, the pool of water is still there for the, uh, for the trees. Yeah, it definitely needs to be checked every single day. So this is, this is a really good uh, depiction of it. The next one... If you want to go to the next one. Jeff, can you give us the other one too, please? Actually, it's this one right here. Oh, is it? This okay, is it. it's coming. Now, they've, uh, they've put a small fire underneath this. The last one was started, I believe, by uh, electricity. This is a small fire for oh, whatever see, yeah. reason. If, it, if the lights catch on fire, if you have some arcing, 
Um, this is just a, a good depiction of once the leaves of the tree and the needles uh, get to their temperature, you can see how quickly it goes. There's a flashpoint for the, the tree, yeah. It doesn't take much. So, you know, it, it's a great experience to go out and get a live tree, but yes. you absolutely have to take um, really good precautionary measures and keep it, keep it moist, keep it wet, keep it full of water. You know, the other thing is when you discard the tree. After Christmas and you're done, you want to take the tree down, you don't want to store it anywhere close to your house. You definitely want to put it away from the house. So. If I remember correctly, the Cooperative Extension usually has a time that you could deliver your trees over to the Cooperative Extension building and they'll take them and they'll uh, uh, shred them up for you. Uh, Very good. They have a shredder there. So. As you can see, we're, we're just barely over a minute here and the entire <coughs> room is already involved. That's, you're not going to get out of that now. You're, you're no, this is this is this it's, could be a fatal fire at this point. So yes. very deadly. It's yeah. very very important that we keep those wet. Yeah, that, that really came to the point there. Absolutely. One of the things about this is, you can stop that now. Thank you. Uh, one of the big things about this is you you know you want to make sure that you don't overload your trees. Everybody loves Christmas lights. Everybody loves bulbs. But whatever you put on your tree, you need to make sure that cord is not frayed, that the bulbs are not broken, and make sure that you have updated uh, lights. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, my parents had the big bulbs, and I swear to this day they still have them. <laughs> and, uh, and they get very hot. So some of those have been uh, found to have start fires. So we need to back away from those and maybe update some of our stuff to the, the newer and safer, uh, safer Christmas tree strings. So don't overload them, though. It's pretty, but it's dangerous. It would be great if you had a power strip with a uh, ground fault interrupter, or are they, are they basically ground fault interrupted or no? You know, they're, they're not all ground fault interrupted. Um, you really want, if you purchase a power strip, what you really want is something with a fuse on it, uh, something that is fuse protected. The thing about power strips is, and you can even read this on the back of them, mm -hmm. uh, number one, you're not supposed to link any of them together. And number two, if, if they don't have a breaker on them or a, a fuse, then they won't pop. And what happens is the power strip itself stays energized. So anything that's plugged into that is going to stay energized with electricity, and it's going to fail and catch on fire as well. So um, if, it, it's, if it's fuse protected, they don't do that. The fuse cuts the power and it becomes a safe unit at that point. Still capable of catching on fire, but it's going to be limited to that device okay. rather than shooting um, uh, surges to other devices. So you'll see it with a push button on it? That would be reset. May have a, uh, may have a push button, may have a flip switch. Mm -hmm. It could have a couple of different things, but it will actually say um, GFCI protected or uh, fuse protected. Some of them have a black knob on the back uh, that has a 25 amp or 15 amp fuse, whatever okay. it may be. So if you just take the time to read the directions, you'll find the safest unit. And they do cost a little bit more, but uh, my theory with that is your house costs a lot more than that. Yeah, and your, and life. your lives. Yeah, my goodness. So, yeah, so that's coming up too because all the trees are out there at the, mm -hmm. the stores in town here and all around. Absolutely. And uh, you might as well just buy some new lights rather than trying to sit there for hours and repair yeah. the old one. And you may get different size bulbs too with different uh, mm -hmm. current rating on it too so yep. a uh, couple bucks maybe at the most and you got a new string of bulbs there yeah. you go you know if nothing else start out slow you know start replacing them every year try to replace one string every year the old ones a uh, little cost a little more cost effective and a lot more safer for everybody and always don't you know, don't keep the the tree next to the fireplace if you have a live fireplace no that would not be a good idea. And wrapping paper should not be next to the fireplace because wrapping mm -hmm. paper will go up real very quickly. And that's low uh, uh, from the movie. It's before your time, Fahrenheit four five one, oh. four hundred fifty one degrees. Yeah. It'll 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 go yeah. up. So that's a uh, low flash point for that. So yeah. that'll go up really easy. Four hundred fifty degrees in a fire situation is actually quite low. So that's that's not as much heat as people would think. So, yeah. You, you know, the biggest thing is just use your common sense and, and try to keep everything uh, pretty clutter-free, especially around electricity. 
um, a lot of times what we see is, you know, space heaters. Um, oh, that's another thing. Yeah, space heaters. You definitely want to keep the space heaters away from a tree, even if uh, it's a purchase tree and it's it's a uh, an artificial tree. Uh-huh. They they are considered fire retardant. However, we need to not confuse that's retardant right. and proof. Fireproof means it it won't burn up to a certain point. Fire retardant means it will burn. Um, it's just going to take a hair longer to catch on fire, basically. So uh, re- retardant and proof are, are quite different. But even even the artificial trees will catch, mm-hmm. you know, if if given enough sources. Uh, we just need to keep them in good repair and keep things that can burn them away. Exactly. Simple as that. So any other tips? Uh, we're thinking. Oh, what about outdoor lighting too? Uh, uh, the newer homes, uh, I don't know if the mobile homes have the ground fault interrupters outside also. I know any new construction. You know, I don't, I don't think that they do. Yeah, because anything new, I've got GFIs around the house. So that, right. that, of course, I had one that was bad too. I had to replace it after mm-hmm. 11 years. So you have to be careful of those also. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, You know, the outside lights, um, the same thing. You, d- you don't want more than three strings on a line. Yeah. So you want to keep, um, keep it at its minimum. Um, don't use a lot of extension cords. Try not to overload one particular outlet. Spread them out a little bit, and don't use metal hangers. You know? Those, yeah, those are a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with the metal trees too. You can same get thing. electrocuted with the, the old metal trees. That's true. I don't know if That's they still true. sell those or not. You probably could get them if you wanted to, but uh, my parents had one of those. You know, I don't know. Oh my goodness, yeah, there's know. aluminum. Yeah, but uh, those would be dangerous too you in may. a. Uh, uh, situation with electricity. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you know, just just use use good uh, good thought processes. Make sure that you know if it looks if it looks kind of hinky and it, it looks like there's something wrong with it, there probably is. Mm-hmm. So trust your judgment. So it's a good time to look for trees when is it now or is it after another week or so? I, I think they're know. just being delivered now. I uh, haven't thanks. bought a, a real tree, and I can't I, tell you how long, so I, I don't I've know. I've given up on those too many years ago. I've, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I haven't bought a, a real tree in, in years, literally years. So you're going to be looking for the uh, the trees where you, you'll you you'll go and make sure when you pull on the branch the, the needles don't fall off? Yeah, you, do, you want to try to get a, a pretty fresh tree. Uh, if the needles are falling off easily, then obviously it, it's already tree. dry. But, um, you know, I'm not... Not a live tree expert, but my biggest thing is uh, keep it keep it full of water, you know. And you don't want just moisture in the bottom. I've seen some people that wrap it in wet towels. That's not going to do it. You, you literally need that tree in, in water. In water, yes. Yeah. Uh, does it help to put an aspirin in there or something else? I, I have no idea. I've heard old wives' things. tales yeah. of aspirins, but just I don't I don't know what the significance water is. Fine, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, if you have water in the bottom of the tree. Make sure you're running your electrical, not near the water. Yes. So, make sure that your your cords can't fall back into that pail. Yeah, and if the kids knock the tree over, get to mop up the water too, because if you have cords there too. That's right. So unplug. many things to think about. Yes. Yeah, if something happens, you have a water spill. Unplug first, and then worry about the cleanup. Be safe always with electricity. Yeah. So the first thing we have to think about is Thanksgiving that's coming up. We have to worry about the, uh, the turkeys. Make sure we don't uh, burn. The- I was done with the turkeys. Yeah, let's not do that. And, yeah, be careful of the new uh, units that you said that Walmart has with the... Uh, yeah, the indoor. Yeah, it's something new, and it, it it's may be a novelty. It's still oil. It still has to be thawed completely, and you still have to lower uh, whatever you're putting in it very, very slowly so you don't have an overflow. Yeah, you got to make sure. Oh, my God, with little kids, if it's up to high, Oil burns could be very, very dangerous. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's scary since you just said that. Yeah. yeah. So make sure you get that word Very out dangerous. to the folks. Uh, we're down to our last two minutes. So we've covered uh, Thanksgiving again. And like like I said, Christmas is coming up too. Mm-hmm. You'll be going to the different stores in town here or in Las Vegas looking for trees, looking for the uh, the lights and stuff. And they're, they're dirt cheap nowadays. So, you know, just spend a couple bucks, go to dollar store, you'll, you'll find the, the lights also. Absolutely. Uh, Smoke detectors. Oh, Make sure you have your smoke detectors in and batteries are good. Yeah, I keep thinking of the joke uh, that the food is done when the smoke detector goes <laughs> off. Yeah. But uh, that's not how you repair a smoke no. detector either, is take the, the no. battery out. So the, how to repair it is uh, put the battery, a new battery in as soon as you hear it chirping. You have, Absolutely. It'll just be a pain in the butt for a couple of three days uh, yes. until you remember to get that 9-volt battery. Yeah, always keep your batteries in there, definitely. Yes. 
Keep them fresh. Yeah, so we're down to our last minute then. So thank you, Anita. Thank you, uh, folks, for watching us. And hope you got some uh, insight out of the, the show this evening. This is one of our Safety First shows. And I'd like to thank uh, everybody for watching. And Maria will be back next week. And uh, a couple of friends that I met uh, while I was out in St. Petersburg when I went out for training, uh, Deb and uh, Renee from Kentucky. They got a real cute drawl. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they were watching the, the show while we were down there on uh, YouTube. So hopefully they'll watch this one when it gets up there too. Fantastic. So we thank you very much and we thank, thank you for watching. News 46, local coverage you can count on.